name is Richard, Richard Ang. Just a couple of years ago, you know, I was still in the corporate workforce and I was thinking how to motivate and inspire my staff and my colleagues uh, to get a, a better job done in terms of customer relationship. And so, uh, out of that, my managing director challenged me, why, why don't you start something and, you know, and get it running, etc. You know, people kind of like enjoy that and I thought, hey, maybe this is something that I can do. It's, it's like a blind spot that you never know unless you try it. It just came to fruition only a couple of years ago when I finally came to Cattell and I realized my dream. So it's, it's a lifelong dream for me yeah, so far. So that's where I got started as a trainer. Yeah. All right, so the first one, cut by how many? Yeah, divide both by one, then divide into three. Three, right? So one, two, three. Divide into four. Could you help me look at the last one? Divide into seven. All right, thank you very much. And the answer is anything like that. Yes! Yes, how many of you got that? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, how come number three you couldn't join? Good job. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else? Well, okay, great. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Good job. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you thinking exercise. This morning, we just discussed many modes of thinking. We said linear thinking, binary thinking. We default to one type of thinking, right? Etc. And we need to think out of the box, etc. All right. So based on this activity, in your own group, very quickly write down what happened. I'm going to ask you, write down, okay, what happened. Now, the next one is what can you learn from this activity. Alright, so very quickly on your tablet, just answer this question. Alright, and then we'll go for our break. So I'm going to get your viewpoint. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer again. It's just sharing and learning. Thinking too hard. <laughs> what, what is this concept of thinking too hard? Oh, you guys have very interesting ideas. <laughs> oh, uh, so what is overthinking? Help me be more specific. Uh. A critical thinker does not give generalization per se but they are able to derive a specific behavior. What was your specific behavior from one, two, three, and four? What actually happened? Could you just describe your thoughts and feelings as you go through the one? Was one easy? Mm. So let, let me just uh, help us process this question. Quadrant one was easy. Why was it easy? You just admit two boxes and you have learned that in school. Nothing difficult. You're using what kind of knowledge? Uh, not experimental, right? What was your... How, how do you know how to divide into two equal parts, same shape, same size? Because you learn it in school, right? So what knowledge are you tapping on? Practical. Ah, practical. Okay. Uh, we call it a priori knowledge. Uh, something that you probably never heard of. Uh, a priori. In other words, uh, knowledge that before, or you can call it episodic memory or memory knowledge, etc. Right? So these are things that you have done. You have done it thousands of times. So this was easy peasy. Did it take a long time? No, it was too easy. Time was very fast. Now we move on to question two. Okay, what was question two in terms of tasks? Was it easy? A little bit difficult or very difficult? It requires a little bit more thinking. Okay. <laughs> So now requires requires more thinking. And why needed more thinking? Because now what has happened? From a very simple divide into two, now you divide into three. There is an increase in what? Number of level. Increase of level, we call that. Okay, uh, for one or better word, we call that complexity, right? There is an increase complexity. Increase complexity. And you know it, your brain tells you, this is slightly different, there's an increase in complexity. So your brain up the ante, use extra power now, and boom! Uh, it takes a little bit more time, so maybe about another 10 seconds more, but you still solve it. Everyone got the answer? So Q1 and Q2, everyone should get the answer, right? Everyone, right? Absolutely! And I should have 100% down here, right? Otherwise, uh, come back to my class again for critical thinking part 2, alright? But now, we move to Q3. 
your brain has just gone to two territory, two landscape, and your brain has been thinking on the way, solving problems. And so now in Q3, what is your brain telling you? Okay, so now divide in four, right? But this time round, what was the timing like? Very long. It would, not only was it long, your stress level went up. There was tension in you. And then when I said somebody down here is on the way, that really disturbed you. Yeah, people are so fast. Ah. Alamak, how come I don't know what to do? Ah? Why is it like that? Someone there already, you know. And the Singapore K for Kiasu come out already. The competitive spirit, right? Then suddenly I announced, can he done it? <gasps> and now your stress level has just compounded the problem. There was complexity. Agreed? Was that complexity? There was increase. In fact, the complexity now is a bit more tense, intense. But there is added stress. Yes? Or pressure. So now what happens to your brain? Your brain literally has grown into its default mode. I put your brain into default mode. And what is the default mode for your brain? Your brain is looking for pattern. How to solve it with the same pattern they've been using for one, two, and three. You all get that? Same pattern. Your brain under stress. Go back to your favorite thinking style. And that was, okay, just now I divide like that. I can done, right? So I divide the squares. So it has to be just, okay, it has to be another shape. Maybe triangle. You try that, but it doesn't work. You're thinking along the line of shape. You were not thinking for L block. That was a totally out of the box thinking. Okay. So now come to question four. So this one takes a lot of time already. Quadrant four now, okay? Quadrant four is my favorite. Let's look at quadrant four. Huh? So now your brain has been primed. We use the word your brain has been primed. This is a word that advertisers, marketing, etc. know very well. We call that priming effect. Priming effect is I prepare you. And sometimes in interview, in questions, uh, I lead you to respond in a certain way by directing certain questions at you. Our brain has been primed by default to go into that mode. Priming is the way that your brain goes into default. So your brain has been primed. Q1, Q2, complexity increases. And therefore, Q4 must be the most, most, Difficult of them all, yes? It's the most difficult. And so, this is what happens in the workplace. In the workplace, you are primed. You come to work, same old, same old. You go into your routine, you open your laptop, you, you answer your email. Every day, you chance, your, your chances of doing the same old is always the same. Then one day, something changed. The box that is here has been removed. There's a, something that changed in the way of thinking, business model, or the way processes are done, post, procedure, or even your customer or colleague have changed. Now that change is this one, totally gone. But yet now, we cannot think in a new way to engage with the change. Can you see how scary it is? That we in our business, whatever model that you come from, your business model is this box and it's stuck there. For ages, whether you are from Standard Chart, whether from uh, NTUC, whether from LB, you have a way of doing things, processes, procedure, policies, all these are stuck. And you just do your work down here. And you can cut your work, you can problem solve, decision making all down here. But one day, when the paradigm change, your old decision-making model, problem-solving model, cannot work. I, I wanted my participants to at least take away something from the program. And I believe that if I can make it touching not just the head, but also the hearts, and usually it's the hearts, and people remember a little bit better uh, when it touched their lives. They touch something within their psyche. And so I, I do my best to connect with my participants uh, so that at least they can walk away, they have take away something, they have learned something that they can apply at work. I believe that we can all grow, right? We can always develop and become a better person. 
And so that's, I think, is the main driver for me.